Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video on my page. If you haven't subscribed as yet, now is a perfect time to do that because we're coming in hot with lots and lots of content, short videos to help you conquer some of the difficult areas of your life, especially those that are prohibiting, inhibiting your success, your productivity, and the opportunities you have for excellence. So in this video, I'm gonna be looking at four strategies that you can employ to tackle a weakness, and not just tackle it, but to turn a weakness into a strength. If you want to see more content like this, drop a comment below this video and let me know. And of course, if there are any other issues, topics, areas that you want me to cover, use the comment bar and I'll be checking it to see what videos to do in the future. So here's why it's important to look very keenly at your weaknesses. Your character flaws are more than just a flaw in character. The weaknesses that you are experiencing are having an impact, whether you recognize it or not, on the relationships in your life. No matter how small the weakness might seem to you, the minute you begin to explore and interrogate what that weakness is and what it is costing you, you will realize the impact it is having on other things in your life. So it's not just feeling like you're not a perfect person, but recognizing that those particular weaknesses are affecting your sense of self-esteem, in some cases, the way you spend your money, an important quality relationship that you would like to grow, preserve, and strengthen your work and, and how people look at you and view you when you go to work. It also could be having an impact on the possibility for a promotion, the possibility to be invited into certain spaces because that weakness is being interpreted by others. And that's a danger of ignoring your weaknesses and thinking that it is just a soft spot in character. You lose the opportunity to review, reflect, ask the people around you how this weakness is affecting them and therefore see the true impact of some of your shortcomings. So I will use myself as an example because I'm not a perfect person. One of the biggest weaknesses for me for the longest time in my life has been showing up on time. And my life is very fast paced and sometimes I allow my need to complete things to prevent me from stopping an action so I can move on to another action. For example, leaving the house so I can be on time for a particular appointment, meeting, session, or phone call. That's a weakness in me. I have such a big commitment to completing what I've started that it is almost impossible for me to stop abruptly in a task because the time is up. I recognize that as a weakness. Now, the four strategies that I have been using to tackle this particular weakness and to turn it into a strength, in fact, it's something that I've now tied with my team to a business outcome for myself. So I'm turning the weakness into an actual strength. There are four strategies that I have been using and I want to share them with you because I think it might be helpful as you do your own introspection moving into this year and setting those goals that you have to accomplish more things and improve the way you have been showing up for yourself in your work and in your relationships. The first step is introspection. Sit down and write a list of the things that you know are shortcomings, character flaws, or weaknesses. You've heard people say them, it has, it has come back to you in criticism from people who are close to you or maybe in your end of quarter, end of year review at work. Write a list of the things that you know are not the best parts of your character and how you show up. It could be how you handle conflict. It could be how you handle anxiety and stress. It could be how you're managing time. It could be um, how you're communicating with your children, with your parents, with your spouse. It could be your pattern of spending. Identify what that weakness is. Write that list out because for most of us, it's more than one thing that we are not quite pleased with when we look at our character and our habits. So write that list down, that's the first thing. Spend some time to review what you have not been getting so right. That's your job. If you're not gonna be able to find some time to just review and reflect on how you have been living and where you have room for growth, it's going to be so difficult for you to identify your opportunities to grow, to expand and to exceed. So write that list and once you have written it, your second step is to identify which one you're going to work on first. And as you develop the strategy to work on the first and you have started or completed and improved it to such an extent that it becomes a strength, you go back to your list and you pick one more that you will work on after that. But I encourage you to work on one weakness at a time because there's a lot of things going on in your life. You can't dedicate your entire life to just looking at the weaknesses and turning them into strengths. You have other things that you must be strengthening, like your strengths that do need your focus, your resolve, and commitment to bolstering and expanding those areas that you're doing very well. 
So one, I know you have other things to do, but two, I don't want you to overwhelm yourself into thinking that all oh, these things are wrong with you and you don't have time to do more and to achieve your goals because you're just busy working on all the flaws you have. We're never going to run out of flaws. So if you spend your time working exclusively on the flaws, you'll never have the time to work on and to develop your strengths and the other skills that are available to you. So pick one. And when you pick that one weakness that you're going to work on, before you move on to the next step, I want you to identify what it would look like if you were to turn this into a strength. So if I were to use my example now around stopping a task so I could be on time for another task, how that would look in terms of time management for me as a strength is that I am always early for my appointments, my sessions, my meetings, my phone calls. I am always early. That's what this weakness of being late would look like for me if I turn that into a strength. So I would become the very opposite of who I am now. And by being early, I would be communicating respect to the people who I'm working with and who are waiting on me. By being early, I get a chance to catch my breath, to settle, to not be flustered, to get my focus and to tune in to the moment without feeling like I've missed something or I'm, I'm here just in time to rush or I'm late and I need to just keep moving. So I'm very clear on how that could be a strength for me and how that could improve my productivity and my professional relationships. So identify the weakness and indicate very clearly what it would look like if you were to turn it into a strength. The third step is to be clear on what it costs you. And if you're not clear, asking the people around you is a good way to identify what it costs you to maintain that weakness and not try to improve it. And if you're not able to identify, even after talking to people, what the cost of this weakness is, you have to now attach a cost. And I did mention in the start of this video that I've, I've, I've twinned this with an important outcome in my business. So I'm working with my team in a way that produces a cost whenever I do not honor this commitment to always be early for my appointments. And that cost is real money. So when I am late, what I have done um, in a few instances is pay the people $1,000 for every minute or every two minutes that they've had to wait for me. 1000 Jamaican dollars, of course. That comes down to um, a little under 10 US dollars. But the point is, if a room of 100 people are waiting on me, I understand the cost of having to give each of them $10. And because I don't want to incur that cost, it raises the importance, the necessity, the need for me to be early so i have attached a cost even though i can also identify the cost that accrues from me not changing this particular behavior or character trait and so in order to do that successfully i have to rope somebody in for accountability and that's the fourth step making sure that you have someone working with you to improve this particular weakness now i don't want you to take this step lightly when we are working on ourselves we can be the worst on two ends of the spectrums. The worst person in terms of being a harsh critic and never giving ourselves room to make an error, but also the worst kind, in fact, maybe the most toxic forgiver in our lives where we allow ourselves to make mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake and just pat ourselves on the back and say, boy, you're human, I saw it go sometimes. And you give yourself too much room for error. You give yourself too much grace so that you don't grow. Get somebody else inside that space with you and let them know precisely the weakness that you're working on, how you want to turn that into a strength. Maybe they can help you determine what a cost would be to make sure that you solve for that problem. And then through that process of accountability, you recognize even in feedback from them how you are growing. Because again, sometimes we are improving and maybe we're tracking it on paper, but it doesn't feel important enough. It doesn't feel growthy enough. It doesn't feel good enough. Having that other person in the space to affirm you, to encourage you, to remind you, and also keep you accountable is part of your ability to recognize and celebrate your wins as you're working on your flaws and your, your um, weaknesses. So it's important for us to spend some time and think about the ways that we are not doing very well, where we have room for growth. Identify that list of things that you would love to improve about yourself because guess what? That's your job. That is your business. Seeing who you are and committing every day to becoming a better version of that self. Not falling into a cycle of negative self-talk and self-deprecation, but looking in a positive way 
on the, the opportunities you have and the steps you can take to become better at life as you enjoy life and learn more about yourself. So just to go over those four tips that I use to improve my own weaknesses and turn those weaknesses into strengths. The first thing I do is the introspection, writing a list of the ways and the spaces where I see room for growth. I pick one of those things and work on one at a time and I'm very clear how I would turn that into a positive or into a strength. The third thing that I do is attach a cost if already I can't identify a cost for maintaining this weakness, how not getting stronger in this area costs me. And I'm willing to put some money on the table to provide me with the impetus and the urgency to improve and not get lazy on this particular space that I want to improve on. And then the fourth step is to pull somebody in to keep me accountable. I genuinely want to grow. I'm not afraid of falling in the process. I'm not worried of being judged. And of course, it means picking somebody who cares enough to remind me, to encourage me, to affirm and celebrate me. But most importantly, to keep me accountable so that I don't forget, so that I don't put my growth on the back burner, so that I don't prioritize every other thing except the room and the spaces where I could develop strengths and therefore access greater excellence. So if you enjoyed this video, please drop a comment below and let me know. And remember to advise me too on some more videos. Where do you have concerns? What are you struggling with? What questions, what strategies would you like me to lay out for you that could improve your productivity and level up this year as you seek to make excellence a habit? Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with someone in your community who you know could grow from this seed being planted in their spirit.